Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, September 13th, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about the 2021 California gubernatorial recall election. Now, this election is actually set to occur tomorrow, and the reason why that is so significant is because we will find out at the end of the evening, or potentially the morning after, if Gavin Newsom will remain the governor of the state of California, the most populous state in the union, and a lot is on the line for both Democrats and Republicans. Discussions have been forming about potential retirements in the United States Senate on the Democratic side in the state of California. There is that discussion, at least, that has no really founding but still is there about Dianne Feinstein potentially leaving office. Uh, through res resignation that would ultimately allow the new governor or the current governor to appoint their replacement. Of course, this recall effort doesn't seem to be something that was initially viewed as likely. California is a very democratic state. You can actually see here that in the 2020 presidential election, California went to Joe Biden by 29.2%. So you can already start to see exactly how democratic the state is. And the race actually didn't start out being super competitive. If you take a look at the recall polls earlier on in the race, uh, let's see if we can actually scroll there quickly, but you will see that the recall effort didn't actually start out with that much support. It actually started out with around 36% of support, which is very similar, in fact, surprisingly, less than what the Republican nominee for governor got in 2018. Now, as the race continued on and on and on, eventually came a point where the yes on recall and the no on recall were quite literally less than a percentage point away from each other. And maybe this was due to the resurgence of COVID-19. Maybe this was due to Gavin Newsom's approval ratings beginning to dip. Also, there was no clear Republican frontrunner at that point in time when the numbers were starting to get closer. Once there was a clearer idea of who would replace Gavin Newsom if he was to be recalled, I'm sure that pushed many Democrats and independents away from voting yes on recall. Today, the numbers stand that no on recall takes the lead of 15 points, according to Real Clear Politics, and 14.6%, according to 538, ultimately averaging to a 14.8% lead, which is more than enough, obviously more than enough, in order to keep this recall effort from actually following through. The ratings here from the Cook Political Report, Sabato's Crystal Ball, and Inside Elections. Lean D, likely D, and likely D in that respective order. So looking at the California recall election, the expectations are that this state is likely. Now I'm going to get right to it. My projection in this race is that Gavin Newsom will be saved in this recall effort by a margin of anywhere between 17 and 20%. I would say if I was to bet on it now that he would be saved by a margin of 18%, but that is just if I was to put a pinpoint estimation, I'm estimating it anywhere between 7 and 17 and 20%. It could go a little bit higher than 20%, which I would not be shocked if it was to do so. But as of right now, looking at my most recent projection on the governor map, if we switch back over here, now this is actually not my most recent one. I made one in September, which gave Republicans 28 governorships. Uh, in this case, they actually were able to win Georgia and Pennsylvania. But continuing on, you know, just looking at this map here, California has been rated as likely D. Now, as you know, and if you've been watching my channel for quite some time, you will know that 17 points to 20 points is not within the likely margin, which means that I would move over California into the safe margin. And I know that might be a little bit surprising, just seeing that we are making our uh, full on projection here that California is going to be a safe state after so much discussion uh, went on on this channel about the possibility of Gavin Newsom being recalled. But that's because a number of things have shifted in favor of him, a number of things that I really should mention. But if you're wondering how I arrived at such a conclusion, how I arrived at Gavin Newsom winning by 18%. Uh, it was pretty straightforward. I will say that I do have a trust in a lot of the data that comes out of California specifically, just because polling data in very safe states typically is more accurate because there's a lot less uh, political or anti-political sentiment here, a lot less of the swing state type of status within these states. So in these states, a lot of the time they are right on the money when it comes down to political polling data. Now, the polls here say that he's ahead by 16 points. That's not what gave me that characterization. I looked at it and said, do I agree with this? And the answer was pretty much yes. I looked at more individual polls, polls that were more accurate over the past uh, few elections. More specifically, you have the LA Times, which was the most accurate in 2018. You have the Public Policy Institute of California, which was the most accurate in 2020. In 2016, Survey USA underestimated Hillary Clinton's support. Uh, but you know, just looking at a lot of these polls in the past, certain ones seem to be a little bit more accurate than other ones. And as of right now, this 18 point estimation is me expecting the turnout to be a little bit higher for Democrats than people are actually expecting. You can see here that the polling group that is uh, polled amongst these samples is likely voters. That's why they have the LV by their names. What does likely voters actually mean? 
Well, in California, specifically in this recall election, likely voters are the more inspired, more likely, obviously, to get out to vote in this election. In that case, uh, in this specific case, it does seem that Republicans are a bit more enthused about this race simply because this is their first opportunity, their first major opportunity to oust an incumbent Democrat. And for California Republicans to land a victory would be as if the equivalent of Democrats winning in Alabama, as they did in 2017. You see, Republicans have been longing for a win for quite some time now in 2021, and this would have been their opportunity to get it. But now, it simply isn't. Gavin Newsom is ahead by a very significant amount, also partially due to the replacement candidates here not coalescing around a Democrat. Had the Democratic Party ran a strong Democrat, Gavin Newsom might be done. The reason for that is because if Democrats found a better alternative, if they found someone who could replace Gavin Newsom that would provide them a more sense of security, less hypocrisy, whatever it is, they would be inclined to vote for them. But since Larry Elder, the Republican here that is clearly the front runner, taking a 23-point lead across all of the candidates that have announced as replacements, over 40, might I add, is a 23-point lead, this scares Democrats. And the reason why it scares Democrats is because Larry Elder has made commitments saying he had no reason as to appoint a Democrat if the eventual case that Dianne Feinstein, if she was to retire from the United States Senate, that he would appoint a Republican. Making a number of boisterous claims, going through with the 2020 election fraud claims, pretty much just picking up that Donald Trump style of campaign rhetoric that clearly is winning him 30, 29% of the vote, whatever it is, largely because there are 30 30, 29% of support in California is done by uh, Donald Trump himself, uh, or is with Donald Trump himself. But just looking at the recall election replacement candidates, a Republican taking a 23-point lead certainly scares Democrats. If they don't have someone that they can corral behind, if they can rally behind ahead of this recall effort, they're screwed. But the only way they're not screwed is if the recall effort doesn't actually go through. And that's why you have seen a huge, huge surge in support for Gavin Newsom in this state. Essentially speaking, they were scared of Republicans potentially taking over. And if you take a look at the predicted market here, they ask, will Gavin Newsom be recalled in 2021? The seven cents is what you buy for a yes. If you truly believe Gavin Newsom is going to be recalled, there is a very slim chance, according to the political betting markets here on predicted.org. So it is very clear that the money here is speaking very loudly that the pundits who are spending a lot of their time and their hard-earned money on this race truly believe that Gavin Newsom will not be recalled. And I probably could have told you that three months ago, maybe two months ago. But a month ago, when the numbers were neck and neck, I probably wouldn't have. In fact, according to Real Clear Politics, for a brief period of time, actually, let me not say brief, from August 3rd through August 31st, or sorry, through August 30th, the yes on recall, the yes remove Gavin Newsom from office, was actually ahead of the no, do not remove. Isn't that fascinating to think about? But a lot of things have been happening recently that I really think are contributors to Gavin Newsom's numbers increasing. If you take a look at the electoral history, Biden won California by 29.4, Newsom won in California in 2018 by 22.5, Clinton won by 29 point something. So looking at California, very, very, very strong history of going towards the left, very strong history of going towards candidates like Gavin Newsom, like Joe Biden, like Hillary Clinton. And it also is something that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have been consistently endorsing Gavin Newsom when given the opportunity, saying that they need to, Republic, uh, Democratic voters in California need to stop the Republican recall, as they put it. And Gavin Newsom is taking advantage of things that are happening across the nation, attacking the Texas abortion law, uh, with many Democratic surrogates going out to the media and to the voters and saying that if a Republican takes over California, what's stopping them? from having a Texas abortion law equivalent in California. Now, obviously, there would be the state legislature, which would be that answer to that question. Who would stop it? Well, absolutely them. Democrats have a supermajority for a reason. But voters don't know that. Voters won't completely understand exactly how our election process actually works. Most people just sleep through civics class and government class in high school and never take a class on it ever again. And honestly speaking, that's probably the majority of this nation. So to expect the American public, specifically the California public, to understand how politics works, Democrats benefit from that. To understand the state and localized uh, level of how California bills are proposed and passed. Democrats are benefiting from the fact that voters are scared of a Republican taking in an office. Because to be completely honest with you, the only power that could actually threaten Democrats anywhere across the nation is maybe a Senate appointment. But other than that, the Democratic supermajority could absolutely restrict Republicans. But 
These voters are Democratic voters through and through and are worried about a Republican taking over, even if it doesn't mean anything, because they know, maybe they don't know, but there is that idea of implications that will set a precedent. The Republicans, if they can win in California, they can win anywhere, and it will certainly help them in the midterms if they're able to do so. But looking at what the expectations are here, well, not even those abroad in Europe expect Gavin Newsom to lose. Uh, some people, you know, looking here, Betfair shows Newsom at a one in eight odds of being not being recalled with a four in one odd of being successfully recalled. It's worse when you take a look at Patty Power, an Irish bookmaker who said that the recall being successful was at eight and one and one in 16 for it to fail. Essentially, all the odds here are stacked in favor of Gavin Newsom. Everybody expects him to hold on to this recall effort. And if you take a look, at the projections here, according to this website, race to the white house.com race to the wh.com. You can see here that in this California governor's race, Gavin Newsom has a 97% chance of being kept in office, a 97% chance. Now they expect it to be a 17 point margin. I'm going with 18. A lot of it is negligible though. And a lot of it does circulate around a lot of the polling data that we already know from this individual race. I'm not blindly trusting it, but I do think that there is some accuracy here when it comes down to the Public Policy Institute of, uh, poli uh, of uh, Government. When you take a look at Survey USA, when you take a look at Berkeley, when you take a look at LA Times, you take a look at a lot of things, a lot of things that are important to analyze California politics. And a lot of the times in the past, they actually have been pretty spot on. So looking at California, do I expect it to be a likely state anymore? No. I expect Gavin Newsom to win the state of California and hold on to this recall effort by around 18 points. And we can talk about briefly about some of the other things that might be contributing to Gavin Newsom's surge in the polls so far. I mean, quite literally a month ago, if you take a look at the numbers, it was very close. For nearly a month, you actually saw that the polling data in almost all of August showed that he was behind on real clear politics and within less than a half percent on 538. Fascinating to see how quickly how dramatically the numbers have changed in favor of Gavin Newsom. But the Texas abortion law is one thing. Biden-Harris' endorsements are another thing. The increase in approval can also be pointed out as a reason why he's obviously wanting to be retained. If more people approve of him, more people will like him in office. Reopening of the schools is something that also might be a thing. In California, schools are poised to open in person. Many already have and have been in school for weeks now. And while there may be mask restrictions or vaccination requirements for athletes, it doesn't really matter. If people start to see their kids go back to a sense of normalcy. They will be happier. If people see families are able to act normal within our standard uh, type of American dream style convention, whatever it is, these things help the incumbent, no matter who it is, Democrat or Republican. If people are happier, if people are starting to see a change in direction, they will be inclined to vote for the incumbent. Climate change is a big thing in California, wildfires, heat, drought, whatever it is, huge thing in California, very popular state, very liberal state. This is something that also might remind voters that one party seems to be having a much more concerted effort in this race than another party. Just something that I also wanted to point out. COVID-19 resurgence might be a thing that might hurt Gavin Newsom, but also could potentially help him. If Larry Elder goes out there publicly speaking as the front runner on the replacement side and says, we don't need mask mandates, we don't need X, Y, and Z, that will help Gavin Newsom. Even if people might be unhappy that COVID-19 is resurging, they'd rather it be unhappy with a good leader than someone who doesn't entirely believe in the severity of the virus itself. Larry Elder also being surged might help him. I really think that's something that is a benefit for the Democratic Party, having someone to run against the same way Democrats had Donald Trump for the past four years. Larry Elder is that person in this race. And the final thing is that Democrats have been quick to label this as a Republican recall, and that absolutely helps. Looking at California, no one wants to be closely associated with a Republican recall on the Democratic side. Even if they may not like Gavin Newsom, if they know and hear that it is a Republican recall, they will likely not vote for it. The reason why? They don't want to be tied to the party of Trump. They don't want to be tied to the party of Rubio, to the party of Haley, to the party of DeSantis. They don't want to be tied to that party. If this recall effort was true, sorry about that, my screen recorder cut out, but I essentially was just saying that voters in a state such as California would not be inclined to tie themselves closely to the GOP and any type of resemblance of it, they will vote against it. And that's exactly what's happening here with this recall. Biden won by 30. Newsom is expected to win by nearly 20. He could go over 20. He won by over 20 in 2018. But this recall effort has absolutely been politicized. It's absolutely been pushed over to the right wing. And that helps Democrats. That specifically helps Gavin Newsom. I think he will be very happy looking at the numbers tomorrow evening. I think that this recall effort will be something that uh, obviously doesn't benefit the Democratic Party, but doesn't hurt them by nearly as much as initially thought. 
even went early on in the race. Gavin Newsom was expected to survive by around 10 points. That was still a dramatic reduction in support. If Gavin Newsom can reach 18% or even above, nearly mimic 2018, it doesn't show any type of 2021 to 2022 surge for the GOP. If anything, it shows that ultimately the party is not in a good position to challenge many Democrats across the nation, and they will see it as such. I said from the very beginning that in any scenario, Republicans will come out on top at this. But if the Democratic Party ends up matching 2018 numbers, I simply can't see it that way anymore. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2021 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.